So today we do the development of the face. I'm Dr. Gaurav Agnihotri. So the human face develops between fourth to sixth week of intrauterine life. Between the sixth to eighth week, the palate begins to develop, thereby separating the oral and nasal cavities. And this development is completed by 12th week of intrauterine life. So three swellings or three prominences develop around the future mouth or stomatodium. So these are the frontonasal process shown in orange hair and the right and left mandibular arches shown in red hair and these swellings, the orange and the red ones, develop in relation to the future mouth or stomatodium. The frontonasal process is destined to form the forehead. So it forms the forehead, the forehead in this region, the bridge of the nose which lodges the spectacles, the nasal septum, the philtrum and the median part of the upper lip and the primitive palate which bears the four incisor teeth. So these are the derivatives of the frontonasal process. If I repeat, the forehead, the bridge of the nose, the nasal septum, the philtrum of the upper lip, the median part of the upper lip and then the primitive palate bearing the four incisor teeth. Now what happens to the right and left mandibular arches? Well, each mandibular arch, it now divides into maxillary and mandibular processes. So we see here the green part and the blue part, maxillary process and mandibular process is formed from the mandibular arch on either side. Now ectodermal swellings, they develop in relation to the frontonasal process. So we see the yellow structures here. One is the lens placode and one is the nasal placode. Now appreciate here that the lens placode lies cranial and lateral to the nasal placode. The frontonasal process shown in orange, the lens placode, nasal placode shown in yellow and the maxillary and mandibular processes, they are formed by day 28 of intrauterine life. One can also appreciate here how the right and left mandibular processes, they meet in midline to form the lower jaw and mesodermal bases of the lower lip. What about the upper lip? The mesodermal basis of upper lip is formed by fusion of frontonasal process with the right and left maxillary processes. So we have the frontonasal process here which fuses with the right and left maxillary process to form the mesodermal basis of the upper lip. The overlying skin of the entire upper lip is derived from ectoderm and that is lying in this area and th therefore the upper lip is innervated by the maxillary nerve in its entirety because the ectoderm of the upper lip it is derived from the that is forming the skin and so the skin of the entire upper lip is innervated by the maxillary nerve so even though the origins of the central part and lateral part of upper lip are different since the overlying skin is derived from ectoderm the maxillary nerve is supplying the skin of the entire upper lip. What about the muscles of the face? Well, they are derived from the second brinchial arch and therefore they will be supplied by the nerve of the second brinchial arch that is the facial nerve. So this diagram here is showing the development of the cheek. The cheeks are formed by fusion of posterior parts of the maxillary and mandibular processes. So we can see here the formation of the cheeks by fusion of the maxillary and mandibular processes. Now we come to the development of the nasal cavity. The nasal placodes, they become pits. So we had the ectodermal swelling or the nasal placode. So each nasal placode becomes a pit by sinking below surface and becomes continuous with the stomatodium. So we have the, you know, nasal placode, it becomes a pit by sinking below the surface and this pit becomes continuous with the stomatodium. So the medial raised edge of the pit is now called the medial nasal process while the lateral raised edge of the pit is called the lateral nasal process. So that ectodermal swelling by sinking below the surface becomes the nasal pit and its medial raised edge and lateral raised edge are called 
medial and lateral nasal processes. This pit subsequently enlarges to form the nasal cavity, while the lateral nasal process forms the lateral wall of the nose. But first, how the nose is separated from the mouth? The maxillary process, it fuses with the lateral nasal process and then it fuses with the medial nasal process. The lateral and medial nasal processes also fuse with each other, thereby separating the nasal cavity from the oral cavity. The nasal cavity, as I mentioned earlier, is formed by enlargement of the nasal pit. The lateral nasal process forms the lateral wall of the nose and there is narrowing of the frontonasal process which leads to formation of the nasal septum in this area. So this nasal pit enlarges to form the nasal cavity and outpouchings of this nasal pit they form the paranasal sinuses. So this is how the development of the nose and the nasal cavity takes place. This slide is showing the derivatives of the various parts of face. We see here how, here how the upper, upper part of the cheek is formed from the maxillary process while the lower part of the cheek is formed from the mandibular process. We can also appreciate in this diagram how lateral part of upper lip is formed from maxillary process while median part of upper lip is formed from frontonasal process while the lower lip in its entirety is formed from the mandibular process. As far as the development of the eye is concerned, the lens placode that also sinks and is cut off from the surface ectoderm. So the lens placode like the nasal placode also sinks and it is cut off from the surface ectoderm thereby forming the bulging of the eyes. Note that the developing eyes are formed at first laterally. So the developing eyes are at first directed laterally and it is with the narrowing of the frontonasal process that the eyes come to face forwards. So one must appreciate that the nasal cavity enlarges the frontonasal process. It gets narrowed down. The eyes develop in the, on the lateral aspect by sinking of the lens placode and with the narrowing of the frontonasal process, the eyes which are first formed laterally, they come to face forwards. So the developing eyes are at first directed laterally with the narrowing of the frontonasal process, they come to face forwards. Now the auricle or pinna, it develops from fusion of mesodermal thickenings appearing on the first and second arches, that is the mandibular and hyoid arches. Note that the pinna is pushed upwards and backwards due to enlargement of the mandibular process. So the pinna is formed in this area and during development it is pushed upwards and backwards due to enlargement of the mandibular process. So the nasal pits become nasal cavities which enlarge in size. The frontonasal process gets narrowed to form the nasal septum while the mandibular process it enlarges pushing the pinna upwards and backwards. So all these dynamics you must keep in mind when you describe the development of the face. So this was all about the development of the face. I will see you soon with a class on anomalies of development of the face. I thank you for watching the video. Till the next time we meet, bye from my side.